What's up guys? This tutorial is going to be a quick follow up to my video that I made about migrating from SSL VPN to IPsec VPN. There were a lot of questions about referencing groups uh, from SAML in your firewall policies related to IPsec VPN. So that's pretty well covered in SSL VPN, but there are a couple of little gotchas when referencing those groups for your IPsec configuration. So we're just going to touch on that in this video. So as you can see here, the video, um, the basically the setup that we had last time, we did not reference the group in the firewall policy. So a user authenticates with SAML, is able to connect to VPN, and then can access whatever resources. You don't have to reference the group in the firewall policy. A lot of people want a little bit more granular control over you know who's accessing what once connected to VPN. With nothing wrong with that, and it's definitely uh, it's definitely more secure, right? So. Um, what they want to do and the questions I've been asking is how do we reference this group in the firewall policies? So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to add this group here. Now, at this point with our setup that we did in the previous video, it's not going to work. Um, there's a couple of little things that we have to do in order to make this work. So you're going to go to VPN. We're going to alter our tunnel a little bit. IPsec tunnels. And so IPsec dial up is the tunnel that we created in the last tutorial. So we're going to edit this. Okay, so when I set up the other one, we were using Ike V2. Uh, from the research that I've done, Ike V2 does not support XAuth, which is required for group basically determination in your firewall policies. So as you can see here, if you have Ike V2 selected, it's not showing you the, the XAuth option, so you don't have it. So if you're, you know, basically there's no way to get around using the groups and the policies if you're using IP2 as far as I know, right? So if we go launch our command line real quick. All right, so if we launch our command line and we do config IP, uh, VPN IPsec phase one interface, we edit IPsec dial up. This is our existing tunnel. We can see that in Ike v2, we have, uh, and, and basically what I've read is that EEP has to be enabled in order to use SAML with Ike v2. Uh, so in order to get this to work in the previous tutorial, we did set EEP enable, and then we did set off, we did set off user group, and we set the, um, the user group that we wanted to reference, right? So when you do that with Ike v2, it's just gonna authenticate the user in the VPN, and then that user cannot be referenced at all in the firewall policies. To basically get around that, um, what you have to do is you have to go into the VPN settings. If you wanna do where you reference it, you're gonna make sure you change this to IV1. XAuth is gonna become an option and then from here, you're gonna select auto server. And then you could also basically replicate the v 2 configuration by setting it up this way. Again, when you set it up this way in v one you're not gonna reference the, the groups in the firewall policy. If you do, it won't work. Uh, but what you would wanna select is inherit from policy, right? So we change it to v one you're gonna to have to update your settings on your Forta client and able to connect because we were using Ike v2 before. But if we set this to Ike v1, XAuth becomes available, right? And then we go ahead and we, once we set XAuth to auto server and inherit from policy, we can click okay. So now once we do that, it should be referenced correctly. Right, so we can go ahead and we can attempt to connect in our VPN. All right, so after I change it back to IP1, you can see my user, my VPN client has connected. Um, and you can see now that the XAuth user is set to my username. If we go ahead and we check the policy, we can see that there are now sessions uh, traversing the policy with the user group enabled. To summarize, you need to make sure you want to you change to IV1 if you if you want to do the groups in the policy, then you need to alter your settings in FortiClimb because once you change IV1 in the tunnel, it changes all the encryption authentication settings. 
same on the four decline. You can't just change IGV1 or IGV2 to IGV1. Um, you have to make sure that you um, update your settings on both sides. Right. So I hope this was helpful for you. Sorry, it wasn't included in the first one, but just to, you know, if you have additional questions about it, go ahead and drop a comment down below and I'll be happy to help. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.